starting right at the start, like give us a synopsis of the life of Amber and what are the, I don't know, the key points of like struggles that you've been through and overcome that have made you the person that you are today. Okay. So I always say I've lived probably 15 lifetimes in a single lifetime. And at a certain point, I, I stopped sharing because it was almost hard to believe that any one person could navigate through as much crap as it seemed my life kept throwing at me. And so I was like, all right, how do you even summarize all of these different phases and stages of my life? And why would I desire to place that on someone else? Because it felt so heavy every mm-hmm. time I would share it, not just for me, but for the people that I seem to be sharing it with. And when I felt that heaviness, it was, it was hard for me because I desire for everyone to be happy. And I love making people feel loved and happy. And so when I felt like I was the one sucking the joy out of the room, I didn't enjoy that feeling. And I didn't enjoy the feeling of reliving moments, mm. right? And I'll, I'll share some of my story. Obviously, it's a lot, but I've had multiple sexual abuse in my life. I have gone through, um, whew, even saying it out loud, it's like, whew. I have gone through multiple bouts, bouts of cancer because I held so much of that in and, and didn't navigate through. Like I never, after the sexual abuse, I didn't get the help that I needed. And not because I didn't love myself, but because we just didn't know, right? When you come from a background where there isn't an awareness or education around how you navigate through such things, And it's just, you just keep on going. Don't Mm. let it affect you. Just keep on going. Well, there's no possibility that something like that cannot affect you. It affects you. And then it starts to affect your physical health because your mental health is affected. Your emotional health is affected. So eventually your physical health becomes affected. And it just layers stress and it layers stress. So I eventually, at the age of 21 when I was a newlywed and had just found out I was pregnant, they do all those tests. And I found out I also had cancer. And that was just like a huge bomb went off in my life. And I needed to figure out part of that. You just keep pushing through. You just keep pushing through mentality actually did me well in that moment. Because when I was told by the doctor, you should abort your child and go through treatment, I was like, "Uh, I don't think so. There's got to be another path that doesn't involve taking the life of my unborn child so that I can live or that I end up passing away so that my child could live. There has to be something different out there. And so I really started looking into what it means to be human like that whole intricate puzzle from spiritual to mental to emotional and physical and how it all blends together and how other cultures deal with this. Because what I was getting from Western medicine was definitely, you have to do it this way. There is no other option. And what I found was there's so many options. You know, choice is one of the greatest gifts we have as being human And when we're told this is the only way you have no other choice, that's the moment you should perk up and go, uh, no, Mm. no. Cancer is a very lucrative business. Mm. They don't want people getting better from it in the way that's available. If you look in a little bit deeper, like radiotherapy and chemotherapy, if that went away, a lot of people would lose out on a lot of profit. And like, people can say, oh, they wouldn't do that to us. Yeah, they would. They're making a lot of money. (laughs) And people do get better, just it's not the most efficient way. 